one. Okay, good morning, Borida, Kroiso. Um, I'm delighted to welcome you to this webinar where we're going to share the overarching cancer R&D ambitions for Valindra for the next 10 years. These ambitions have been um, developed by the Valindra Futures um, uh, Research and Development Group, uh, which has included 21 members of the multidisciplinary uh, workforce at Valindra with representation from um, nursing, AHPs, pharmacy, radiotherapy, physics, palliative care, clinical and medical oncology. And also we've had representation from Cardiff University. We've also had amazing patient and public representatives. And hopefully, so long as the technology works, you'll hear from them later on. Uh, we've been reporting regularly to a leadership group that's been um, chaired by our chief executive, um, Steve Hamm. Um, it's worth saying at this stage that the group were tasked uh, to develop the overarching ambitions and direction of travel for cancer R&D, and that's what we've done, and that's what we're going to share with you today. How that's going to be done um, needs to de be defined through an implementation plan that the Trust, working with its partners, will need to develop. Um, I'm going to present our ambitions to you, then we'll have a patient's story, and then we'll answer your questions. So if you would be kind enough to post your questions into the live event Q&A and that there's a little bubble with a question mark um, in it on, uh, on your sidebar. We have a really excellent panel uh, from the group to answer your questions. So Sarah Townsend, Libby Batt, Rob Jones and Paul Shaw are on. Uh, so if you want one of them in particular to answer your questions, then um, please uh, say so. Um, so why is research important in healthcare? Well, there's very good evidence that patients who are treated in a research active healthcare settings have better outcomes and care, and the benefits extend to patients beyond those actively uh, recruited into research studies. Research empowers patients and NHS surveys have shown they want opportunities to be involved in trials of new treatments. Research provides the evidence for better treatments, and there's no better example of this than the research that has recently been ongoing um, within the UK and across the world to develop COVID-19 vaccines, which may get us out of this pandemic. Finally, research has wider benefits for the NHS, enhancing an organisation's reputation, and it motivates, retains um, and attracts uh, new staff. So we were very lucky, as I mentioned, to have a member of the public, Bob McAllister, uh, on our group. And having a public voice is an important contribution because, as Bob says, you're able to say whether what is being proposed would seem like a priority to a member of the public or a patient. So Bob's provided some powerful words for us, which we've recorded, and we will provide a link for these uh, later um, in the week. But in the meantime, here are a few of his quotes around why research is important. So he says the treatment of cancer is improving all the time. Survival rates are getting better too. These advances are coming because of research into cancer. If the disease, that's cancer, is present, you want treatment that offers the best chance of improvement and survival. If research improves the prospect of that recovery, then let it happen. He says it's a fact that Wales lags behind other countries in cancer survival rates. Things need to improve. Of course, we benefit from research advances that are made elsewhere, but why not encourage it to happen locally too? And he says my aim would be uh, for the research participation experience to be open, of, offered to more um, patients locally. So that's a challenge to all of us. As well as having patient and public support for research, Welsh Government wants us to take part in research and the current NHS Wales planning framework uh, says that organisations are expected to demonstrate how the workforce are being supported to undertake research and importantly it says everyone working in the NHS should regard research as an integral part of their role. So how are we doing currently? Well, um, this slide shows that on average, we receive around six and a half thousand patient referral per annum to Valindra, and we recruit an average of around 400 patients per annum to research study. So that's between six to 7% of our patients. So it's fair to say that most of our patients are not currently offered opportunities to take part in research studies. Uh, this pie chart shows that we've got a long way to go 
to make research available to most of our patients, but it also shows the opportunity that we have to, to change more of that blue on the pie chart uh, to red or green. We believe as a group that the key to increasing the proportion of our patients who have the opportunity to take part in research during their cancer journey is to improve research access through a connected cancer research delivery network across South East Wales, taking, taking research closer to patients' home, homes where that's uh, appropriate and offering access to new and novel treatments in the best possible um, location. So the Valindra Futures R&D group have uh, agreed overarching ambitions for cancer R&D. Our mission is to become a leader in cancer research nationally and internationally, transforming the culture of our organisation into one where every patient and every staff member who wants to engage with research has the opportunity to do so. Our vision is to work with patients and our partners to design and deliver excellent research that improves the survival and enhances the lives of cancer patients living in Wales and beyond. These will be delivered through work in four themes, which are putting patients first and at the centre of everything we do, advancing new treatments, interventions and care, driving translational research through connecting the laboratory and the clinic, and embedding research and innovation within the organisational culture and structure. Our aims will be to enhance patient experience and care, to improve patient outcomes and reduce variation in access to research and also in outcomes, to accelerate the implementation of new discoveries into the clinic, to demonstrate the impact of our research on our patients and our services, and to build research capacity and capability across South East Wales. So I'll just go back to um, each of our themes again in a little bit more um, detail. So in theme one, we're going to have a patient and carer perspective. That means we'll co-produce research with our patients and involve patients and the public in research priority settings, something that we haven't previously done um, in Valindra. We'll improve patient experience by having a focus on palliative and supportive care research and we'll reduce variation in research access across South East Wales and we'll also study how we might reduce inequality, inequality and variations in patient outcomes. Finally, we want to promote a more integrated approach to our research, which means that for every clinical trial we set up, uh, we'll uh, consider the patient experience or patient focus research questions. So, for example, if we're setting up a clinical trial of a radiotherapy technique, we'll look to see whether a graded exercise program can, um, can speed up patient recovery and experience um, from ra after radiotherapy. We'll also uh, consider whether we can bank samples and images uh, to use to make new discoveries from in the future. So in this way, every patient can contribute to research more than once and we'll make sure that every patient contribution counts. So you'll remember that from the pie chart, only, only about six to seven percent of our patients are currently recruited to research studies. Our target is that within 10 years, um, most of our patients, that's over 50 percent of our patients, will be offered opportunities to take part in research of some form or another. So theme um, two is uh, advancing new treatments, interventions and care. Um, we'll prioritise new studies that are led by local investigators, supporting talented indiv individuals to develop their ideas and help them to bring their research through to the clinic. So these are medical and non-medical um, researchers. We'll widen access to late phase clinical trials and phase four implementation studies across the region from Neville Hall to Kumtar from Cardiff. We'll enhance access to patients to early phase trials and advanced therapy trials. These trials often test treatments for the first time in man and so have to be carried out with our health board partners and we'll come back to that in a little bit. Next in this theme, we'll maximise opportunities for radiotherapy research afforded by investment in, new, in the new Valindra Cancer Centre, which will include a fleet of new Linux, that's uh, radiotherapy treatment machines. And we also have the pot potential for a um, radiotherapy research bunker, which could be a game changer for our radiotherapy research in the future. 
Finally, in this theme, we'll integrate novel imaging into our research, making use of the enhanced imaging capabilities in New Valindra and also making use of the truly world class imaging facilities that there are available in Cardiff University in Kubrick and Pettick. So in theme three, we will drive translational research through connecting the laboratory and the clinic. The laboratory in this diagram then the laboratory in the university is over on the right hand side in red and here's where new um, treatments for example drugs immunotherapeutics vaccines or, or technologies they don't necessarily have to be um, drugs uh, are discovered these then go through the cycle of preclinical uh, testing to reach the clinic at Valindra in blue on the left hand side of the slide. And this is where testing of new treatments and interventions happens in clinical trials. Samples, for example, blood samples, tumour samples can then be taken from patients in the clinic and taken back to the laboratory to be analysed so that new discoveries are made and the cycle starts all over again. So at the bottom of the slide is translation of um, new discoveries from the laboratory to the clinic and at the top of the slide is reverse translation where clinical samples are used to inform new discoveries and I think this slide shows how closely integrated NHS and university research has to be to be really impactful. Okay so this is our fourth and final um, theme and in this theme, we're going to establish a culture that values research in every member of the research team. And we all have a role to play in that. We'll build capacity and capability in the multidisciplinary research workforce. And this will be inclusive so that everybody who works for the organization who wants to engage with research can do so. We've set a target of ensuring that over 20% um, of the workforce in every department will have at least 20% of their time protected for research um, uh, within the next 10 years. And over and above that, the research leaders will be enabled through an academic career pathway to establish, um, so that we establish the research leads of the future. Importantly, we'll also create an infrastructure to support research. So this includes a digital infrastructure to support our research activities. For example, um, we've spoken to the digital team about creating a living platform where research ideas can be posted and shared by anyone in the trust and then developed uh, in collaboration with others that may be interested in the same ideas. There'll also be an infrastructure developed to support new researchers with grants and protocol writing. And we'd like to see the R&D governance processes streamlined across organisational boundaries in South East Wales so that we can roll out our research more efficiently for our patients. Finally, we'll link with our innovation team to implement new knowledge uh, and practices developed through research into practice. And importantly, we need to start capturing the impact of the research that we carry out on clinical care and services. And this will be crucial uh, to making the case that we are making a difference to our patients through the research that we're carrying out. Okay, so here are the current links between Valindra and its partners across South East Wales. So in the centre, is Valindra Cancer Centre and our Valindra Outreach Clinics, linking on the right with the university on a few research studies, but not in a strategic joined up way. So that's why the arrows are uh, in dotted lines there. On the left uh, is how we link with the three university health boards in South East Wales through the cancer MDTs. Patients are referred to Valindra from the university health boards for non-surgical cancer treatment, and then are often referred back for ongoing care. There are multiple points within this journey back and forth between the UHBs and Valindra that patients could get involved in research. But at present, because we're not sufficiently joined up, uh, patients are too often not able to access research opportunities. So potentially this model is not ideal. In December 2020, most of you, I think, will know that the Nuffield Trust issued advice to Valindra on the proposed model for non-surgical tertiary oncology services in South East Wales. And we were really, really pleased to see that R&D featured prominently in the Nuffield Trust advice. And if we think about the advice that they gave relevant to research, if we start at the top, they said that an agreed research strategy is a clear priority, and that is what we have tried to develop and what we're sharing uh, with you today. Um, they then said that a research hub at UHW needs to be developed. 
um, to work more closely with the hemato-oncology uh, service and other services, enabling phase one trials to take place um, and other trials uh, that may require um, other services. Nuffield also said that this research hub offers could offer opportunities for closer working with the university and they Nuffield said that this was going to be increasingly important going forward. They then recommended that Valindra units in the University Health Board, so that in the that in the three university health boards, need to be viewed as a key part of the research delivery network and supported accordingly because of their access to other services and also a very large number of patients. They encouraged the group, that's that's our group, to ensure that it's benchmarked the research approach and capabilities. And we've already begun to look at other centres for um, and benchmark our activity against that activity, but we will be going out to formally benchmark with other centres from across the UK over the next few months. Finally, in terms of R&D, Nuffield recommended that the uh, research radiotherapy research bunker that uh, we've mentioned should be located at the new uh, VCC, otherwise there would be an efficiency penalty for uh, citing it elsewhere. But they did say that arrangements would need to be uh, put in place to trans transport patients and research staff, you know, between New Valindra, the research bunker and other um, sites if required, for example, early phase drug radiotherapy studies. OK, so this is then our proposed model for the future based on the Nuffield Trust advice, discussions within the group and reference to Welsh government policies and strategies. So there will be a new Valindra Cancer Centre which needs to be designed to enable R&D with the workforce capacity and capability to make research widely available to patients attending the centre. You may have heard that there will be uh, or there's proposed to be a centre for learning at new VCC. And there's the potential that R&D infrastructure could be cited there along with audit, service improvements and public engagement um, uh, activities. We'll also need clinical facilities for R&D and also the radiotherapy machines and the research bunker will be there. There will then be Valindra at research facilities, units, whatever they may be, that's not yet well formed at each of the UHBs. And these will form a multi-centre clinical research network across South East Wales to provide equitable research access across the region. And then on the UHW site, um, there will be um, a tripartite cancer research hub, which will be a partnership between the Valindra app for research, the Cardiff and Vale UHB and Cardiff University, which will provide a focus and facilities for cancer research in Cardiff, which will benefit patients from across the region. Here, there'll be delivery of early phase trials and advanced therapies, collaboration with hemato-oncology and also potentially teenage and young adult cancer services. We'll be able to liaise much more closely with the university, enabling translational research, and we'll have direct access to the laboratory, biobank, surgery, interventional radiology. Um, there will be clinic meeting space here and room for um, to develop and enhance integrated um, clinical academic workforce to lead uh, research across the region. And you can see that being co-located with the School of Medicine, there'll be uh, advantages here for education and training too. Um, so this is the diagram I showed you earlier. And with these, um, with, this, with these new models, it becomes much more integrated with every partner being linked together across the region to enable research opportunities for patients, uh, either at new VCC itself, the Valindra at research at each of the UHBs, and then on the UHW site, as Nuffield recommended, a tripartite cancer research um, hub, which will be a partnership, we hope, between Valindra Cardiff University and Cardiff and Vale, enabling early phase and advanced therapy studies, translational research and opportunities for research collaborations like never before in South East Wales. OK, so as well as support from the Trust, our partners and Welsh Government to do this, we're going to need these three things. Our patients to tell us what the priorities are for them. Our partners because none of what, what we've described in the last few slides is going to be possible without our university health board partners and our university colleagues. And then finally, you, our workforce. We need more of you to get involved with research. And um, whether you've been involved in research before and whether you have research as part of your job titles, 
if you haven't, we'll support you with education and protected time. And we will then need you to be flexible, possibly working across organisational boundaries, following our patients to different places across the region to access the best research opportunities um, for them. Just before I, I finish this part of, uh, of the webinar, back to uh, our public voice, Bob McAllister and his words of wisdom. So uh, in the first bubble, he talks about the clinical uh, researcher and they say they are clinicians and that's medics and non-medics on the one hand and researchers on, researchers on the other, seeking new ways of treating uh, cancer that they see affecting their patients. So who better to be a researcher than someone who's actively, who actively engages with the patients affected by the problem? He says a lot of people live in this area of Southeast Wales. Many will over the course of time have a need to engage with Valindra. So let's make what is on offer the best it can be. A rallying call, I think, for all of us. He says an active research centre will have improved facilities and access to clinicians who are seeking to be leaders in their specialist areas. That has to be a good thing for us patients and members of the public. And finally, he says that of himself and of Alan, who's been our patient representative on the group, he says we've been welcomed and generally heard, genuinely heard on the group. He says anyone reading these research strategy proposals will see that the patient is the front and center priority. So just a final uh, slide about next steps. Um, the first thing to do is to engage with our staff. This is our first of three webinars this week, so you, it's a bit of a practice run for us, and so hopefully you're going to be bear, bearing with us. Uh, we also need to engage with our UHB and academic partners. We'll then have to engage with Welsh Government, charities and industry, and as I've mentioned, we'll go out to benchmark our activity, but also our processes and, uh, and, and the way that we do things with other centres across the UK. We'll develop an implementation plan for this um, with a lot of help from the trust and others. Uh, and we will then need to develop an infrastructure and workforce to enable this to be implemented so that we realise the mission and vision. So that's all uh, from the presentation, the introductory presentation. Um, um, we will take questions in a little while, but I'm just first going to hopefully uh, stop sharing my screen um, so that Francesca uh, from our comms team, who has put in a lot of work to try and get this uh, series of webinars up and running, is going to hopefully uh, be able to share with you um, Alan Buckle, our patient's voice. Thanks, Francesca. Uh, my name is Alan Buckle and I've been a patient at Belinda since 2006. I actually started trials on the very first day I came here and that was the Stampede trial. For the next six years I was under the normal treatment for prostate cancer, uh, radiotherapy and quite a lot of chemotherapy but by the time uh, 2012 had come, all that had really run its course. And I was lucky to get on the early phase trials, just as it started. Uh, the first trial was for prostate cancer, and I have now been in the early phase trials for six and a half years, uh, and I'm on my third trial. Well, trials have been very important to me. Uh, when I came to live Belindra, I had no grandchildren. I've now got five. The latest one, a little one-year-old adopted by my younger son. I wouldn't have been able to see those grow up, I don't think, without being on trials. And so trials are very close to me and I'll stay on trials as long as I can. I've been a keen trialist from the outset um, and I would like to think that most people offered a trial actually take it up because without trials um, then new medicines, new treatments don't emerge. A good example of that is the COVID-19 where great work done to get a vaccine quickly 
but it did rely on a lot of young people across the world uh, volunteering to trial the drug. I, I look at it and I see really there's a partnership between the patient and the researcher and that it's up to the patient to really do their very best to support the research uh, units. Without research, there's no new treatments, there's no new drugs. And so it really is essential that patients support researchers in the quest to develop new treatments and drugs. Uh, I've always believed that. And uh, I felt that I needed to do something. I've had excellent service out of Lindra. I've probably been in a great deal of all the departments one way or another. Uh, and so being an early phase trialist is my way of saying thanks very much. So where do I go from here? Well, I stay where I am for as long as I can as a, a trialist in the early phase. I saw researchers as the hope factory. I saw research as a bit of a production line, if you like, uh, where coming down that production line was the finished product, product which gave patients hope, real hope. And I've really never changed my mind. I still think that's what it does. And anyone who gets on a trial certainly goes in there with a bit of hope. But they also go in there realistically, knowing full well that it may not work. But the period they're in it, they'll meet some great people. They may make friends, I'm sure some have. And I say they'll learn a little bit about their cancers. Well worth being a trialist. Fantastic and very powerful, I think, um, there from Alan. So we're going to go on to our questions. I'm, so I'm going to hand over to Libby, who is going to kind of um, coordinate the asking of questions and give us all um, questions to answer in turn. So over to you, Libby. Thanks. Thanks very much, Mererid. Um, and welcome to everybody in this webinar. Um, I'm really moved by what Alan has um, had to say, I'm sure you all are too. And um, I don't think I'll ever forget his phrase, the hope factory. So we're going to move on to some questions now. So please put your comments or questions in the live event uh, question and answer box and we'll pick those up. And for those that are answering their questions, that's Mererid, Paul, uh, Shaw, Rob Jones is here at Townsend. Can you put your cameras on and get ready to un unmute your mic? So we've had one or two questions already come in on one of the first questions. And maybe Rob, if I could come to you on this question first. Um, does this mean with all of these different changes that all early phase trials will now only happen at UHW? Over to you, Rob. No, I don't think um, that's our plan. I think um, we, we, I think it's it's not a major shift from our current position in the sense that um, every time a trial, an early phase trial comes uh, through for us to consider, we risk stratify it and effectively um, the majority of trials that have come through over the last five to ten years, we've stratified and uh, we've been able to carry them out at Valindra simply because uh, we felt that it didn't require on-site ITU. I think, as I say, uh, there is a shift now to um, to more uh, unpredictable therapies, which include cellular therapies, viruses, um, and even the immunotherapies, um, where we kind of feel that uh, the risk of giving that patient the drug for the, if it's a first in human study, um, we really need support services on-site. So. Um, so I think what we what we believe is is that there will still be an early phase activity at Valindra, but 
um, there will be a shift in increasing numbers of trials that we will need to take will need to take place at the, the Heath campus. So, um, so we will need to have a presence there. Um, so I don't know whether that answers the question. Thanks, Rob. I think that that uh, does answer it perfectly. Thank you. Um, another question um, that's come in. Um, perhaps I can move to you, Sarah, with this question. When is this likely to start? And will all of this change happen at once? Well, the first um, first part of that is obviously dependent very much on us all working together on an imp implementation plan and supporting um, supporting through staff through that as well. I think it's not all going to happen at once. I think we've, it's very much a case, as Rob said, of building on the um, relationships that we've already got and and particularly with regard to streamlining processes. I mean, we need to be slicker. We need to engage with the other organisations and make things happen from a process point of view. Absolutely. But no, it it won't all happen at once and there'll be plenty of opportunity for everyone to work together and we will absolutely need everybody on board with this uh, going forward. Does that is that helpful? That's really helpful. Thank you, Sarah. I think it's really important as well that this is a 10 year strategy. So we're not we're we're, we're looking at a decade um, that, we're, you know, within this within, within these ambitions. So um, that's great. Um, I can't see any questions coming in. Fran, you may need to just check that I'm not missing them. Um, I can only see Julie and myself um, already ask, you know, asking people to ask questions. So please don't be shy. Please, you, even if you want to make a comment, please type it in. We really want to hear from you. So let's go on to another question. Um, so perhaps, Paul, this is coming to you next. What are the real advantages of joining up with Cardiff University? Paul, you're on mute. There's always one. I know. I said massive. The opportunities are massive. I mean, one of the things we're lacking is that translational link. We haven't got it really. So, have, I mean, I'm so excited by this Nuffield advice and the fact that we have this research hub. It's going to really change the way we do things. I think this is a real fantastic opportunity. We've needed this. It's going to bring us together. We're going to be in that place where we have all the right people meeting, talking and access to the infrastructure and samples, surgeons, um, you know, the, the potential is massive. And that diagram that Mered showed of the translational research, then a re the reverse translation is hopefully going to happen. And so we can ask novel questions and do true research that's translational. So I think it is going to be a paradigm shift. Um, and, and it's a, I, I, I think it's, it's an opportunity that we've got to grasp and will hopefully make a big difference and we'll all be working together in different ways. So yes, I'm, I think it's going to be great. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. So Fran, um, I'm hoping you're checking the sidebar because no questions are coming in, whether people are shy or it's a Monday morning. Anyway, we'll go on with them. Um, We've had an anonymous question, um, Libby, from somebody who said, could Venindra use the Life Sciences Hub as an interim while the UHW Hub is being developed? Mareri, do you want to pick up that question? I had a horrible feeling that you were going to send that one my way, Libby. Um, whoever's asked that question, I have to say it's something that we haven't considered as a group. So um, I think it is something that we probably need to think about. But my initial answer would be that the Life Sciences Hub is not a clinical facility. Um, you know, so it could provide a, a space for people to come together for meetings and discussions, but um, you know, it would not be somewhere where we could offer patients access to clinical trials and also there would not be the access to all the things that we've talked about that we need, ITU, HTU, interventional radiology, you know, um, surgery, all those other things that would really kind of um, make, enable our research both early phase advanced therapies, you know, but also the translational um, research. So 
as far as I know, that would not be a possibility, but uh, it is something if any other member of the um, Q&A team have thoughts on. Um, Rob, do you agree with that? You're on mute. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with what you say, Marrera. It, it, it's a space, but it's not a clinical space, so it only provides part of a solution. Thanks. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Mererid. Um, Fran, is there any other questions? We do have one about the, is there a plan to engage with other universities in Wales? Uh, I'll, I'll answer that because it's the easiest question. Uh, yes, there is. So there will be the Cardiff um, Centre at the hub that uh, Mererid presented, but that doesn't mean we're just going to be working with one university. It means that we're going to go and seek out um, and continue to build partnerships with other universities across Wales. I suppose there's, an, there's one question uh, that came in before. This sounds very exciting. How can I keep up to date with this initiative? Well, I'm going to pick that question up as well. So what we will do is we're going to make sure that we're communicating this um, via the R&D&I website. So we'll be able to bring you up to date with what's happening and progress. We'll certainly be coming out with you um, and talking to you about the implementation plan in how we're going to get going and what we need um, to have to be able to deliver this. And I'm sure we'll be coming out on general communications as well. So please keep an eye out for the, this, this initiative. Um, it's really exciting times. And I know sometimes people are, you know, maybe thinking, well, we're so busy. How on earth can we do more or how we can do research? And as Mareri pointed out, the way we're planning to do this is to seek real investment in people and um, and potentially some ring fence time so people are able to do the research. OK, Fran, any other questions? We do have another question. Um, have you looked at innovative facilities in other hospitals for inspiration? And if so, what would you particularly like to see in the new Valindra Cancer Centre, Centre for Learning? Wow, that's that's a really, really good comment. And thank you, whoever answered that. We haven't as yet. We've been building really good links with um, our innovator, innovation partners. So the innovation team has been part of this initiative. So I think this will be definitely included in the next steps of thinking about the implementation. Sorry, Fran, what was the second part of the question? And what would you particularly like to see in the new Valindra Cancer Centre's Centre for Learning? OK, so why why don't we do a round robin with that? Um, so that's a question for for all of us. So for me, I'll start off and then maybe come to Rob and then Paul, Marrero and Sarah. For me, with the Centre for Learning, I think we really, I would like personally, a shared space where we're learning together, where we're actually sharing our practice, um, sharing our findings and actually just sharing what we've done wrong. So next time we do it, maybe it'll go, uh, it'll, it'll go better than it, it did. So I think it's about us actually sharing together. So Rob, over to you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's slightly out with uh, kind of my remit, but I think, you know, for me, it is embedding within kind of trainees, students at a very early stage that research is actually bread and butter business. It's, it's kind of like what we should all be doing. It's not an add on. Um, and I think kind of this is the slight issue within the NHS is as Research is, is often regarded as, a, as an added extra, not regarded as something that is should be delivered as a matter of course. So I think changing the culture of students and trainees so that research is normal as opposed to an extra, I think would probably be my, uh, my kind of comment. Thanks, Rob. Paul, what's, what's your viewpoint? Yeah, I think building on what Rob's saying, that I think we need to have a centre where if someone has a research question, they can contact the right people in one place. So if someone wants to do research, there's one port of call, there's one place that people go to where they can get the support they need. 
to help build on their research question and deliver a trial. I think if that can be done in a coordinated way, that would be, again, fantastic and a real step forward. Thanks. Over to you, Mererid. You're on. Um, no, yeah. So, um, in addition to as as Rob and Paul have talked about, you know, infrastructure and support for new researchers, for example, with grant and protocol writing, you know, mentorship, um, things like that. I think it could be a really um, good space for us to really um, go for the patient and public engagement that we talked about being so important you know we've talked about co-producing our research studies with our patients and uh, involving patients and the public in priority setting and i think you know the amount of input that our patients and public representatives have had on our group has just really been um amazing for me to see and they've been a real inspiration to us so i think that that you know i can see the center for learning being somewhere where we come together with patients and the public to really priority set and develop our research for the future and also importantly to communicate the importance of research i think anybody who who listened there to alan you know can't fail but be moved about you know how he communicates the importance of research it's much much more effective than us showing a few slides and, uh, you know, talking the talk in abstract terms, you know, people who are living through um, cancer can be much, much more powerful than we can about making the case of, uh, about why this is important. Thanks, Mirarid. And finally, Sarah. Thank you. Um, so as people may well be aware, we have changed how we um, so the R&D function is now merged and working together with the nurses and the trial teams. And it's really going back to what Paul said, somewhere that we are, that staff can come and patients and somewhere where it, we can support new researchers and do all of the things actually that Paul was saying. And just it's going to be a fantastic opportunity, absolutely. And it's it's getting us away from being the backroom staff, getting out there and really helping to move forward with the portfolio, study portfolio. Thanks, Sarah. And of course, people on the, on, on the webinar might have their own ideas. So please type in your ideas and we'll make sure we'll collate all of your ideas. So. Um, no idea is a bad idea, so please type it in and um, let's put all of those together. Uh, that would be great. Fran, any other questions? We haven't had any come through, but we have had one via email, which was you mentioned hematological. I'm sorry if I said that wrong and solid tumour cancer working more.